we are. The Loch Unhead Car Race. Perhaps the best garage you'll ever see because this is Car Ace. Tonight on Viaductography in Action, Simon travels to the Loch Unhead Viaduct to photograph its concrete, claggy horridness for all to see. Now the Loch Unhead Viaduct is a big concrete beast, but the concrete has been styled to look like stone. Now this railway opened in 1901, I believe, and by that time concrete was being used for everything, so this line signifies that. And you might be wondering why is a ladder here? People often abseil from this viaduct and you need a, an easy way of getting to the top, so quite a simple story behind this peculiarly placed ladder. Simon's really not that big a fan of Christmas and they've taken note of this, the marketing people, and are now sticking Christmas trees on uh, places that appeal to Simon, such as viaducts and things like that. So you're never going to get away from it, Simon. You're just going to have to cave in. You never am. Let's see the present under there for me. No, they didn't even get me anything. <clears throat> There's only one move left to make. Simon, Simon, stop. You're doing it wrong. There's a ladder over there, it's easier. Oh yeah, good call. So we've come to the bottom of the viaduct, and unfortunately because of the trees, there really isn't a good place to get a decent vantage of it. Um, if you were to come here really late on a summer's evening, the sun would be on the far side, and you could photograph it from the uh, empty fields over there. But at this time of the day, it's, well, at least you get to see it from down here, even if it's not really photographable. You get a good look at the, uh, concrete masquerading as stone up there. I think these are quite nicely done on this line because they're really getting into the, into the element at this point. But that refuge up there is uh, collapsing under its own weight so I wonder how long that's going to be there for before it comes down. So on this stump here beneath the viaduct you'll see what appears to be mushrooms. Now the architects thought uh, when they built these they could use concrete to mimic real mushroom flesh. And as you can see, they've done an awful job, you know. You can see that they're completely and utterly fake mushrooms. They look like burgers. No, Simon, you're going to die. You're going to die, Simon. No. 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 I guess it's my turn now. St. Philan's Tunnel. 62 yards of disappointment. Now there are four tunnels like this in Scotland, well there's probably a few more than that, but four that I kind of recognise as being the short for Currygalachie, Loch Oik, Eshiels, St. Philans. Now the, the other three are completely open, usable and all part of public footpaths. Really, this should be open, there is absolutely no need at all to fence up a tunnel like this. It's just ridiculous, what, what's the point? Fencing off something this short, it's basically just a long bridge, it's just an avalanche shelter or something like that. It's just this should be part of a footpath. Think of the attention this would draw if you could walk all the way from here to Comrie, cycle this, do whatever you want with it. Something should be done with this tunnel, something should be made out of it. This is it's just ridiculous. However, there is hope because further along the line is the Glen Tarkin viaduct. Now, that was missing its span for many years, but they've recently reinstated it with a nice wee footbridge, so hopefully, work will be done. And soon enough, we'll be able to walk through this tunnel as part of a long distance public footpath and I'm looking forward to the day that we can. Now, this kind of bamboo stuff makes for a really good weapon. Not because it's in any way strong or useful in combat, but it makes a great noise. Now, 
In the original Star Wars, the fighting was all a bit more kind of like, you know, proper stuff that you'd do in a sword fight. Whereas in the prequel trilogy, it was all... At which point, I would stab you in the back. Yep. <laughs> well, this is Inner Pefre Castle, and it looks to be uh, just your usual kind of tower house uh, design castle that you get in Scotland. Now, like a good teacher, I'm not going to tell you all the answers. You've got to work this out for yourself what it's all about, when it was built, what it was for, you know. I know what it was, but I'm just not going to tell you. By that you mean you have no idea because we've come here, here on spec? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. I know everything about this. Here we go, we're actually on the top floor of the castle. It's remarkably well preserved on the inside. Uh, much better than I thought it would be. And this castle even has some spiral steps. I'll let you do the honours. It's in remarkably good condition. It is, considering the outside of it and all the danger building sign, this is actually a real treat. You know that church smell you get? Yeah. It's, it's kind of got that. It's, it's weird, isn't it? It's something doesn't feel quite right about this place. No, it doesn't at all. It's a good modern looking door with a modern welcome. Right. And here we go, we're in the main chamber of the inside of the castle. And again... Yeah. Nothing about this place feels quite right. There we go. That was in a Pefri castle. Oh yeah, well, somehow we managed to completely miss that. Yeah. Alright, we'll stop screwing you. What actually happened was we couldn't get into the castle because the farmer came down there almost as soon as we got there. So just pretending this old chapel, which is actually a really nice space is the castle just to mess around. This is the Dalriat Bridge. Now it was once part of the A9. It was built in the 1930s. I think 1936, but don't quote me on that. And it's got this lovely, elegant, concrete arch design to it, very similar to a lot of bridges on the A9 that were built like this. But this is a really nice example of one, not too far from the actual current A9, which is over there. So we're on the underside of this A9, old A9 bridge, and you've got walk upable arches. Unfortunately, you can't get right to the other side, but you can get about halfway if you wanted to. So let's go on. So there is. Pretty so, grim up there. I would only go much further than this. Yeah, I think this is about where this journey will end. So next to the uh, A9 bridge, we've actually discovered an old 1930s culvert. Um, now, if you look in there, it's not too long. It looks reasonably tidy, so we're going to actually have a look in. It's a bit of a backbreaker, unfortunately, for us. Uh, you really can't get any higher than a crouched position. But it's nice and dry, there's no water that goes past your bloody Wellington boots like some other places we went to recently. You do bang your head if you don't pay attention, like I just did there. Yeah, I kind of want to be at the other end now. <laughs> this is going on a bit further than I possibly would do. You get a nice yeah. acoustics down here. Yeah. I mean, it's not scary or horrible to be in, it's just you have to bend and you can't hold it for very long. The, the shit spits here, though I walked through from this entrance to begin with. I'll only sit by the banks of the loneliest river. Where the loneliness don't flow and cascades and washes away any trouble and die.